again, <laughs> showing my allegiance. But Sander, what, every time you think, how can he innovate another control deck? I know that obviously he has his testing group and he'll work on it. But now we've seen a, a rework to his NAIC creation with that Mewtwo V Union, gaining some tools. Uh, not only V guys, we can see there, but you might have noticed already there's a thick curlier line. Yep, so it looks like he's uh, he's got the Curlier there in hand, which has that fantastic ability. We've known it as trade before, but refinement, discarding a card from your hand, uh, to then be able to draw two cards. Uh, a fantastic way to continue burning through the resources which he may not need, but also getting those pieces into the discard uh, for that Mewtwo V Union to get come out of nowhere. Um, but we'll see lots of different spicy cards in his list as per usual. He's really refined this into a way where he's just kind of hitting the meta. Like once again, of course, there's typically some matchups he might would like to avoid, but here he is at 8-1-1 up against Fusion Mew. Oh, Fusion Mew, sorry. <laughs> um, fantastic again, another Mew. Uh, showcasing the power of the deck there. And as you mentioned, you've got that Meloetta pin yeah. uh, in full flow. Everyone knows I love me some Fusion Mew, but I'm going to park Fusion Mew for a sec here because mm -hmm. I want to talk more about this V-Union deck because you might actually see in the prizes, there's a Sword and Shield base set Gengar there with that Life Shaker ability. I love this card. I was I assume this card might see some play at some time. That Life Shaker ability is actually really good when you consider it being paired with a, with a Mewtwo V Union, letting you move around damage from your Psychic Pokemon. So mm -hmm. basically, Sanders sort of game plan here. And, you've, and you actually might have seen his Radiant Pokemon card of choice as he was going through the deck, is he wants to try and spread as much of this um, damage from his Mewtwo V Union onto other cards, such as the Curliers or the Gardevoir that he plays or any other psychic types and the Radiant Tessina with that elegant heal ability letting you heal 20 from all your Pokemon essentially just removing mm -hmm. damage from play and I guess the idea is here the theory is that if the Mewtwo V Union doesn't have to actually spend time doing the um, the healing attack, which heals 200. It can actually just start swinging with Final Burn for 300, yep. or even the Life Explosion, which lets you spread 16 damage counters. <laughs> so imagine Sableye, but doing an extra four. Now, if you can do that turn after turn after turn, you're actually a stall control deck capable of just picking up KOs at a fast rate. So we see Sander yep. end the turn there with a the Gorman dies, and it's over to Brent. Yep, exactly. So it's just over to Brent, and he immediately benches a pretty much almost full board there of yeah. double Mew and three Genesects. We're going to see many fusion strike systems as per usual. Um, we can talk about Sanders' deck all day because it's just got so many <laughs> yeah. random different cards, but of course we have to share some love for Fusion Mew as well. You know, we've seen a lot of four DTE Mews. There's the first Fusion Energy that we see. Have we seen uh, Fusion Mew on stream this I weekend? Don't I don't think, think so. we have, actually. So that's the first, <laughs> first attachment, uh, which is fantastic to see. Um, just it doing so well, because this is one of the few variants of Mew that we actually thought might actually be very good yeah. going into this tournament because you're able to attack going second with that Meloetta. Um, this deck is kind of doing a bit of a throwback as well. It's got a lot of the Pokemon catchers. Yeah. It's still playing the Lost Sea to kind of maybe remove things like the Drapion Vs if they suddenly pop out of nowhere. Um, but then it's got an extra card like, you know, the Lost Vacuum, the Serena's played as well. But it's, yeah, it's pretty much a throwback at this stage. Yeah, this also, this kind of reminds me, this is a very similar list to what I played at the Open where you'd have to sort of play, uh, the, the London Open that is, where you'd have to play the sort of catchers to try and turn one Meloetta Cheese Palkia by catching up a... Um, a power catcher trying to take two prizes on turn one. And I guess the big advantage or the difference between four DTE Mew and the Fusion Mew is obviously the Fusion Energy allows you to play Meloetta with that Murderous Echo attack. Um, and just gives you a nice big yeah. one prize option. Here we actually see an attack we don't see too often with the <laughs> energy mix allowing you to attach an energy from your deck. Doesn't say anything about basic, so you can just get the fusion energies out of the deck there. And I'm guessing Brent thinking, I'm probably not going to be under much offensive pressure if I'm playing against Sander turn two, so I can take a turn off and do a little bit of an energy Yeah, mix. definitely. And Sander having to promote that routes back into the active spot after that escape rope there, um, but immediately does evolve into that curlier, does immediately dis card that first Mewtwo piece um, into the discard um, as you already mentioned and alluded to this deck is very all in with the Mewtwo V Union so it actually has to kind of uh, get those pieces in yeah. as soon as possible and with that refinement ability being able to sort of quickly uh, burn through and draw cards it's amazing to see a different engine to mm. be able to do so um, obviously the Gormandize is there as a key um, aspect of the deck to be able to just start you know, refreshing the hands as quickly as possible. Um, but just with the little different tech cards, as you mentioned, 
if you're a Mewtwo V Union, eventually when it comes out, and you don't need to use the healing regener regenerative um, attack to be able to kind of heal 200 damage off, you can just kind of move it back around. And even if you just leave your Curliers or your Radiant um, Gardevoirs and you scoop up nets and heal that way as well, yeah. you can just start final burning as soon as possible and dealing outrageous amounts of damage. Um, and as you can see there, uh, Sander kind of prioritizing wow. the, the refinement ability um, as we continue just kind of going through the deck. He's got so many different card outs. He's got the ultra balls, the quick balls. He'll be looking for a way to get Gormanized back in the active spot um, and then just kind of refresh his hand once again. And here's another ultra ball. Um, just kind of going through the pieces at the moment. None of the new 2v Union pieces are prized Which either. Which is nice, yeah. Yeah, of course, still playing the packages like Peonia to kind of pick up pieces anyway. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he kind of directs this. Does still have a number of the um, disruption cards. Yes. The Flannery, the Fan of Waves to kind of cause really sort of a, a lot of issues for a lot of different decks. Brent's going to be having to try and manage his resources well um, from this scenario going forward. And maybe that's why he went for the energy mix. Yeah, I think... If you can, well, I mean, how can I say? If you're playing against Sander, well, if you know you're playing against Mewtwo V Union, I think a priority <laughs> would be try and get to few, four fusion energies in play. But just as I say, that one is getting discarded, um, which is really unfortunate. So, what I was going to say is if you have four fusion energies in play, that means your Melowet as Murder's Echo actually starts at 280 base damage with a choice button. You can actually one shot um, Mewtwo V Union. So, that's what well, Sander has slammed the door shut on that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, that means you're going to have to see a turn for Brent Noe. He tries to stack a lot of power tablets. But um, and it, as, it, as it does go over to Brent's turn, and I guess we're looking at Sanders' deck, it's almost like his NAIC deck where you remove some of the slower cards like your Vettels and Mill Tanks mm -hmm. and just trying to turbo out the V Union at a faster rate, which I think makes a lot of sense in this format. Brent gets, has a retreat, and um, we start to see that Fusion Strike system bonk his ability, letting you draw up to the amount of Fusion Strike Pokemon you have in play. Yeah, so yeah, with Sanders' deck. Um, instead of necessarily going via the energy denial route that he did uh, for LAIC into the Lugias, he's now you know, using and utilizing cars like V-Guard energy yeah. to kind of build a tankier Mewtwo V Union. And then, of course, with the healing concepts of the different cars that he's teching in, um, that's how he can kind of get around and constantly just keep punching through um, with that uh, amazing Ooh. damage. There's a Pokemon a catch over for a, a Tails there. You know, <laughs> many flip cards now in Brent's list um, alongside the Chromomatics as well as he continues to burn through and burst through into his deck with the Genesect uh, Fusion Strike system. And he's just got a number of options here because, of course, for him to kind of burst through the damage, he's going to have to use those uh, power tablets at the right time. Yeah. He's going to have to try and use Silene to kind of uh, bring them back give him another opportunity to try and uh, burst a lot of damage on. Of course, we do see one power tablet in the prizes as well. Yeah. Um, so he will be looking to try and get that as soon as possible and then just have one of those crazy turns which maybe can one-shot a, a Mewtwo V Union. Um, but that's that's going to be a massive game plan and he's got to try and identify that as soon as possible. Yeah, we even saw the, the Forest Seal Stone V-Star power being used and I imagine you wouldn't really want to be using that in this scenario. You'd rather try and hold that to try and find, like you alluded to, mm -hmm. those power tablets. You can just stack them. But I'm guessing Ben didn't join to a Mew V-Max because yep. I, I, I think he took an Ultra Ball off the V-Star power to then get some cards out of the hand to grab the Mew V-Max. So a little bit unfortunate there. But then again, when you do have Genesis, you can just draw a ton of cards and... But when you try and hold power tablets, it's sort of it's limiting in the fact that you can only draw up to six cards. If like three of them are tablets or cards that you can't play, you're only drawing three then, and it can get a little bit tricky mm -hmm. to try and work them in. But you do have cards like you know Crammer, Crammermatic to try and get them as well. But yeah, it looks like we're going to see a Techno Blast onto the Curlier going into the Lost Zone because that Lost yes. City Stadium that was played as well, and and the Snorlax is back in the active spot, so Sander wasn't able to find an NG or, an, or sort of a, a scoop up net to kind of retreat out of it. Um, but there's a Trekking Shoes again, lots of different utility cards to try and burn through. There's another uh, Level Ball to try and get more of those um, Curliers out because it's under 90 HP, it's only 80 HP to continue using refinement and sort of getting through that deck where possible. Um, does play the one rare candy um, to allow um, him to kind of go from the Ghastly into that Gengar um, to be able to kind of move those damage counters around his Psychic Life Potion. Shake, yeah. baby. Uh, which is something we don't see a lot as well. But he's also playing another very unique card, uh, which we won't see in this 
right now, particularly at this stage of the game. But he's got that Shadow Rider Calyrex as well with the Shadow Mist attack for 10 damage. But during your opponent's next turn, they can't play any special energies or stadium cards from their hand, which again swings like the 4 DTE because their yeah. only way is to <laughs> actually um, play the DTE is that. But because Brent is playing Fusion Strike, he has access to a list of Sparkle and there's other ways to kind of get energy into play. So, you know, that's why Sander probably wouldn't go down this route, but it's another way of dealing with things like the Mewless um, that he's seen um, in other matchups. Yeah, we've seen that Shadow Rider be used before by Alessandro Cremasoli yep. in combination with like Path to the Peak or Collapse Stadium to just halt Mew decks or even Reggie's decks at that point. And it gets a little bit dangerous, that uh, Shadow Mist. But like you said, uh, Sander playing against the Fusion Mew here. Can't really go down that route. So at least to spark on even energy mix at this point. So we see two of the Curlies in play now. One refinement being used and... Well, Creator Sander, he is uh, doing quite well here. He's setting up quite <laughs> well. Just got to get those VU. Oh, we actually oh, see the Gardevoir the here as well. So the Gardevoir has that Shining Arcana ability, which lets you basically take the two, the top two cards of your deck. If you find any energy cards there, you can attach them. So it's a bit like a... Oh, there's a third V-Union piece, by the way, in Discord pile there, folks. In case He's you don't know there. actually how the V-Union works, I don't think we described that. So the Mewtwo V Union is actually a combination of four cards and you have to get all four cards into the discard pile before you can sort of bring them out of the discard pile, combine them together and put them onto your bench. And because they are four cards, they have a combination of four attacks and this one even has an ability. So one of the attacks lets you grab two energies from the discard pile and attach them. That's Union Gain. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Life Explosion, which lets you spread 16 damage counters. There's Super Regeneration, which, which is what we normally see with the Mewtwo V Union. It lets you heal 200. We saw that's a great effect to NAIC. And then we have Final Burn for four energy 300 damage and that bottom part has the ability photon barrier which actually quite nice prevents all effects of attacks from your opponent's pokemon done to this pokemon so stuff like confusion or anything like this actually really cool yeah not just the confusion but things like that uveltal um oh also, yes uveltal you're yeah. not able to just instantly knock it out or uh, the Articuno as well, actually, there that we just go. saw. Yeah, so yeah. So actually a really handy ability. Yeah. And then we see, as we see, we kind of have a Gormandize, you know, or Santa has up to seven cards already. And it's kind of back over to Brent to continue applying pressure. You see a lot of those energies sort of come down now. Um, as that Mew on the bench there has two fusion energies on it. Both Mews also have the choice belts. Again, those that opportunity to keep trying to um, increase the damage output, um, sort of anticipating a moment when the Mewtwo V Union may actually uh, find its place. And oh, there's a Silene, there's a first one heads. heads and one what tails. wonder what this um, grabs. Likely to kind of grab, ooh, so is that the switch card? Just in case anything gets gusted up, um, of course. So there are a number of sort of uh, switch carts and escape ropes um, in Brent's list. We've seen the escape rope earlier as well. Um, so. That could have been a way for Sander to maybe gust something up, get something stuck in the active, yeah. uh, and then find a way to maybe just start using Psy Explosion to just kind of keep putting damage counters around where necessary. Um, but yeah, let's just back over to Sander now. Um, it's just kind of thinking about how he's going to use those Curdias and then also that Gardevoir to kind of look at the two cards. Well, he's, Sander's at a plus six cards here with the Shining Arcana and then the two refinements yeah. like... He's going to turbo through the deck so fast. That's it. Like um, that's how the deck's built. I mean, Shining Arcana, you don't, it's not just look at the top two and any psychic energies or basic energies you can attach them to your Pokemon. You could just put the two cards straight yeah. into your hand. It's almost a it's, bit like... Um, it's a trade or refinement without the discard. Yeah, it's like, a, <laughs> it reminds me a bit of Intrepid Sword from Zation, but it doesn't end your turn, right? I mean, obviously, Zation mm. lets you look at top three, but this is, a, this is two and you get to keep the cards and your turn continues and... We see the another refinement there. So Santa just trying to get those Mewtwo V unions in a disco pile. I think there's two there now, I believe. Was it? Was it? I think you said there was three. Three, a three. Ago. So and here's a Peonia. It. Let's see if he gets the Gengar out here. He Ooh. picks up the Gengar and a Psychic Gets energy. the Gengar. I think Red Cat is in hands. We're going to see a little bit of laugh shaking going around. Uh, it's definitely something you can consider. And his hand's such a big hand right now. He can start using and putting some of those pieces which he doesn't necessarily need yeah. um, into the prize cam. Uh, for us, they, it looks like he put the Snorlax and the Scoop Up Net, uh, which are a little bit less useful in this situation. Doesn't want to, wants to make sure he has the right energies available to him as well. Of course, yeah. keeping things like um, the Gengar and the Rare Candy ready for that Ghastly to evolve into it um, when he needs to. So obviously he has to time yeah. um, the actual evolution as well. But what's really cool about the Super Scoop, uh, the Super Scoop Ups, but the Scoop Up Net, sorry, um, he can use the Gardevoir almost like how we've seen with the sort of shady dealings chain. Yeah. You can kind of 
build your deck to kind of constantly keep drawing so, so many cards. So he could burst through and draw maybe about eight, ten cards in a turn if he wanted to keep using scoop up nets to kind of evolve those other curliers and then keep using guard of his ability. Lots of different utility options from that. Um, but it's fantastic to see. Yeah, he's been able to grab, I believe, that power pad from the prize as well. Gets Piona back in. And, and also the Flannery, which is super important. He's already seen the Silene go. Um, and... And yeah, because that fusion energy, I'm not too. I don't think he put that back on into this deck, did he? No, right. he took the switch card and then fusion tried system to draw it. I'm guessing, Brent. I'm guessing he's either there's two ways he's either played. Either he's got a dead hand and he and he didn't have another V Max, so he had to actually switch to retreat, or he's decided, wait, I'm playing against Sander. He probably wants to deck me out. I'm gonna need to stop yeah. playing cards, <laughs> so I make it as hard <laughs> for him as possible. It's so. one. It's one of those things where where you sit across a player like Sander or any sort of real control, and you start seeing Ooh, pieces like come together. Yeah, you d you really just don't want to let a gassy go down because Gengar is so important at this stage. But when you sit across a control player, you have to find multiple ways to try and maybe. Um, just deal with it. Yeah. Uh, and it, it becomes a real problem when um, Did you don't really know. Him? Yeah, he's rare candy than the Gengar already. That cast, he also has a, um, <laughs> a psychic energy. does have a fade-out attack. You put this Pokemon and all attached cards into your hand. So you can kind of just um, hit and run. Yeah, a little uh, bit of hit and run. Yeah, 20 damage, you know. Uh, just to bad. kind of apply some really odd pressure. But at the same time, the reason why you might do that is because Mew uh, the Mew v, uh, v Max has 310 HP. Yeah. So just it by dealing the twenty damage, your it's then your final burn from the Mewtwo v, uh, v Union can one hit. Can KO it? Yeah. Because I don't think. Yeah. Brent isn't playing the Oracory actually. It's something I didn't no realize. It's not playing the Oracory. So that final burn or any damage will be you know as it reads on the card. And we we'll see a Cram. I see a Lost City. I think I saw one tablet. <laughs> Come on, show us your hand, Brent. Come on, help us out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not looking too great. Oh, I mean, there's just three tablets, a Cramorant, and a Lost City, I think I see. Oh, okay. So three tablets isn't too bad, actually, because you want to hold them for when the um, V Union comes out. Mm. So let's see. I don't think this Mew V, unless there's a, a V Max, this can't really deal with this Snorlax. Like, you definitely don't want to play these tablets to He's KO. It's psychic uh, leaping, I think. Yeah, for psychic, some damage. psychic leap for 70. Um, and I guess... Now that Sander has this, you know, the double Curlier and the Gardevoir, this makes playing those sort of disruption supporters like a Flannery or the Peonia or even a Silene, it makes them much more better now because you're still drawing cards. Like obviously, the drawback to, oh, is that piece. the last piece? I think I'm the last yeah, piece. Yeah, so it's just now about timing the right cards, getting the right pieces into his hand ready um, for the next Has he got a scoop turns. up net in hand? He does have a scoop up net in hand as well. So he's just got to make sure, because obviously Sander's going to be wary about the yes, choice belts yeah, that are available, course. also all the power um, tablets that Brent hasn't used yet. Um, of course, he's already discarded one of the fusion energies, so it's it's just focusing now on trying to limit yeah. uh, Brent as much as possible. So that 210 base is already increased by to 240 yeah. if he attacks with a fusion energy Mew. Um, and then it's just power tablets, so 30, 30, 30. There's another 90 there, so plenty of damage. Sander will be looking for that V-Guard energy as well, and then if um, Brent is able to find a fourth power tablet. That's just so much damage to try and mitigate, and it becomes really hard. But there goes another um, fusion energy there from uh, the Flannery as Painful. well, and the stadium, of course, because the text means you also have to discard the stadium. Um, yeah, it's it's now just kind of grinding through um, at the moment. Sander's hand is far too big right now, so cannot use Gorman dies. Um, you know those Curliers <laughs> and uh, Gardevoir really sort of come into the fore here to be able to draw as many cards as possible. And I imagine, you know, Sander, a control player for the longest of times, knows he probably knows the mind game. He's thinking, right, if Brent isn't drawing many cards with Fusion Strike System, he's probably either holding really good cards like Power Tablets or he's dead drawing. But in case he is holding really good cards like Power Tablets, I can't just bring out the V Union because it will just get KO'd like mm -hmm. you alluded to. So Sander even has even has access to the V Union opt into let me just disrupt a little bit more, you know, with these disruption supporters, which I really like to see. And we see the Elisa Sparkles like that is the last fusion energy i believe so if that fusion energy on if there's an energy that goes down on that movie on that movie in the active that means there'll be no more fusion energies left meaning if brent wants to attack it will have to be with a dt1 which minus is 20 and that minus 20 is actually pretty important yeah it'll st it will start to play a part in terms of whether it can deal the full amount of damage yeah. on that mewtwo v union it also has 310 hp but with that v guard energy reducing damage by 30 from pokemon v's mm. it's in effect a 340 
HP Pokemon. Um, and at that stage, you're looking to really um, just try and out-tank decks, which uh, typically can't hit that kind of damage. But we know Mew often has that one chance uh, yes. to do so. So Brent has identified that. That's why he's not played any of those power tablets. He didn't need to necessarily over over KO the Snorlax and just kind of dub double hit it with the Psychic Leap. Um, so just trying to yeah manage his resources very well here. Uh, as you see, Sander also playing now his Silene, rolling two dice. Here we go. And so there we go. That's one, one head, which is... Law of averages, can't argue <laughs> with that. Perfect for Sander, <laughs> being able to then also still kind of maintain that loop with the power pads as well. Uh, and they're just kind of straight draw <laughs> uh, into the power pads so then he can continue cycling through where he necessarily needs it. And there's the power pad, I imagine likely the Flannery. Yep. Flannery and Silene, yep, so you can get this. And we saw a sort of similar signing loop at um, NAIC, right? Sort of looping mm -hmm. support like Team Yell cheer it was back then in combination with, you know, Silene as well. So you can just loop back this stuff. Um, you have to imagine Stan just going to try and wear down Brent before that V Union comes to play. We might actually see that fade out from Gasly. And like you mentioned, it's actually a sh really relevant 20 damage from that little Gasly. Yeah, definitely. Just uh, just that 20 damage to kind of put the mu, mu V maxes in range of final burn. Uh, the key thing from Sander here, he's going to know that Brent's holding on to things like those power tablets. Yes. It's a, it's a scary prospect it um, is. because there's no way for Sander to actually... Um, disrupt the hand no. of Brent, uh, which could be really, really difficult to kind of uh, manage going forward, because because Brent hasn't had to use any of these power tablets as of yet. I'm not too sure how Sander will actually play out this mm, th this yeah. game, um, because he's gonna expect a massive burst turn from Brent's side. And there's an Ultra Ball, just getting rid of the Echoing Horn and the uh, and the Meloetta, uh, your favourite. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's okay. the active with the. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I'm still love you. <laughs> there's a fuser strike, ed the fuser strike energy mu, uh, V max in the active spot, of course, with that 20 damage. Um, yeah, I think Sana will be looking to at the very least get rid of this um, mu, given the opportunity, um, because it won't have that damage reduction from the 20 as well. So, let's just see how the rest of this turn plays out, and then how Sana is going to be able to kind of maintain this because. Brent is down to three prizes. He is, yeah. Sander can't really hang around much longer. I imagine, I wonder if Sander might try and combine some sort of, is it, does he even play Gust? Oh. Oh, no, he doesn't play Gust. I'm going to say he might try and Gust up a Genesect and try and, you know, side explosion around and hope Brent doesn't have a retreating option. But that's not going to be the case either. So, yeah, you know, with those power tablets in hand and Sander not playing like a, a Marnie or any sort of hand disrupt, it is going to be interesting to see how he actually navigates this. Now it's time mm. to see why Mies was saying before how <laughs> um, you can be a very bad matchup for a deck like this because that burst potential, not, man not many other decks have that option just you know swing upwards of 300 at a whim. And, but Mew is one deck in format that can do it. Yeah, definitely. And just thinking about uh, the Mew VMAX, uh, we'll start trying to add up some of the damage just to kind of help everyone out as well. There's the Flannery ones all the time. Again, identifying key aspects from that Fusion Strike energy because that doesn't have the reduction from the DTE. Yes. Uh, but yeah, the 210 base as the most powerful attack that's currently available right now. And there's the, the Flannery Flannery waves. waves just to kind of Is cause this the a little turn? Um, it's possible. This might be the turn where he's actually looking at it to think, Maybe it's time uh, to bring the Mewtwo out. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This if he's found a way if out. If there's no fusion energies left, the shadow, I mean, there's no fusion energies left in that. You can't play a Lisa, which means a Shadow Mist means Brent can't attack, no? No. Won't because be, there's, won't no be able for, to. Th there's no room for a Mew V now. There's no so more fusion there's, energy There's left. no fusion energy, which means you can't energy mix as well to get out of this. And the Shadow Mist, with no Aurora a Shadow Mist actually does damage. There's no way to Psychic Leap. <laughs> And this so is this where 10 damage is going to stick. It's going to keep going. It's going to clock up. And Sanders is going to be cycling through his deck and hoping to just keep going with the power pass yeah. and make sure he doesn't deck out. Now, we mentioned how important uh, this Calyrex would be in the DTE version. But when it gets to the stage where Brent becomes only the DTE yeah, version. Exactly. Uh, maybe this is the time for Sander. And Sander's found that moment by checking all of those resources. As a control player, it's so key yeah, for you to is. understand. Not just your own, but you have to manage your opponents as well. And it's gotten to the stage here. There's a Pokemon catcher. So looking for a, a way to potentially 
stop, stop this that, uh, Shadow, uh, Shadow Mist yeah, yeah. Shadow Mist attack. The Gengar comes up, and which is a bit more of a bulkier Pokemon. A does chunky. have two retreat, and this is going to be. <laughs> this is going to be the moment where Sander has to find a way out of that position. He did use that scoop up net already um, to get out of to get the Shadow Rider into the active spot. So and it'll be interesting to see as how. Well. Does he have a way out of that? Does he? This is this is going to be vital here for Sander. Uh, he I could Silene maybe a scoop up net, um, and then shining Arcana into hand. But you have to imagine these targets for the Silene are so crucial when your deck gets to this small size. I don't know if that could be, if that's going to be an option, but. Um, he does. He d I, oh, this is so <laughs> many different options. <laughs> yeah. It's just thinking about the remaining Ooh. cards that Sanders put back into the that that Gengar could be a bit of a the reason why right now um, Sander may struggle here because uh, is there a way to retreat out of it? There's the Silene and uh, and trekking the trekking shoes. shoes, which is super important. But he really, I think he needs to hit potentially double heads on this Silene because yeah. he want to get that power pad back into uh, the deck as well. So, oh, unless he actually has another oh, out, okay. we're about to have a little okay. look. There's the Peonia. Oh, is he, he not? He's going to put it down to the Peonia to get he, the scoop up net. He has put the scoop up net there himself, so he knows where the scoop up net is. Oh, does Peonia not shuffle? No. Oh, no, you it's Heavy Ball that shuffles. Yeah, yeah you, not Peonia. You know exactly yeah, you where are your correct. cards you are, are correct. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so long as Sander hasn't forgotten <laughs> oh, goodness. where that scoop up <laughs> net is, he will, be, he will have access to a retreat out from this Gengar. Um, of course, doesn't ha then doesn't have the Gengar for later turns. No. But this allows him to continue Shadow Misting. Continue the mist. I mean, continue the loop. Here we go. Or the lock, I should say. Here comes the... Yeah, yeah he's, he's got, got the psychic it's energy. It's Sander. Why are we even doubting him? It's Ooh, he, he hasn't taken the bottom left. He knew he, there was an energy there, and he knew the scoop up net. So oh, it's Sander. Realizing that that Snorlax is less useful to him, because ideally he probably would have wanted that uh, Pow Pad. Yes. And maybe the yeah. Pukumuku as well to be able to yeah, pitch true, and just draw actually, cards yeah. when he needs to keep going through. Um, but as you can see, there's the Gassy going back. The Curly is no no longer needed to draw any more cards where Sander doesn't really have much left. Um, and the Scoop Up Net in hand now, so to continue. So Brent again, ha well, Sander on the defensive having to create this wall with that uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex and it's back up in the active spot and just now going to be continue to deal. 10 damage every time. Yeah, and that's where you see the sort of top play there from Sander. Brent trying his best to get out of this, and Sander's like, nah, not today. Yeah, and that's, the, a, what that's a one. Is that a one? The yeah. go is really yeah, odd with a die, <laughs> so we do apologize. That is a G and a one on the dice there. Yeah. Uh, really odd from the go dice, but we, we're here and we know, so we're happy to tell everyone at home that it is a Tails. There's a double power tablet. He's just going to have to try and draw through cards. What um, is he trying to draw I'm here? Another gust. I mean, we did see the energy go down on the guard of our, and we do see another one in the hand. So Sander can just pay retreat on that guardy if Brent tries to gust that. And I think he's already used the boss, right? That's yeah. why the Gengar came up in the active. And he only plays the one copy because the other other gusting option is Serena. The Serena, yes. Yeah, and so there's no Vs on the match. He's also discarded already the Echoing Horn from an Ultra Ball earlier. Oh, true. So there's not that Sander, I believe, even has a V in the discard pile right now. Um, so it's really just Brent to kind of look through the deck and almost find out whether he even has an out at this stage. And yeah. Sander... Does he even have a catcher left? Is that, is that might be what he's trying to dig for? Potentially. But again, there's an energy already on the Guardi. Um, and... Sander just needs to, and I think that potentially is a scoop is that there. A concession? I, wow. I think that is. I think Sander's found a path to victory. Arena um, was discarded by Sander um, in what, earlier in the game, but we do move into game two now. Uh, there's just under 20 minutes to go. We know typically control games are a bit longer, um, so Brent's going to be looking to try and apply pressure as soon as possible yeah. to try and limit Sander's. Day. But Sander's led his best starter. He in has. one of his four copies of that Gormandized Snorlax, which is incredible to, for control players to continue just kind of getting cards into your hand, to get those combo pieces off. And in the Fusion Strike Mew, you don't typically have that kind of hand disruption no. options. You don't play no. the Marnies, you don't play the Roxannes. So Sander will always have his hand available to him, and that's, that's going to be quite, quite a scary thought. We actually see one tablet get discarded there. I'd love, I wonder what Brett, uh, Brent's hand was because that's a costly resource. He actually prized yeah, a tablet like as well. One there. 
Um, yeah, so this is already, Sanders already probably licking his lips, knowing that that's, that's 30 damage already not going to be coming down on yeah, a Mewtwo no, Union, sure. if necessary. And um, we see the, the, the sadness of the turn one Genesec V-Star with the Forest Steel yeah. just to grab a VRP battle pass. It feels a little bit sad when you have to do that, but it does get you in the game at the very least. And, you know, Brent looking to get the Genesex down, flood the board, so you can start drawing some cards with Fusion Strike System. But, you know, one tablet prize, one of the discard pile already. I guess Brent does play a copy of Sarlene, actually, so that so the discard pile is kind of accessible. Mm -hmm. But still, it's one more hurdle that you don't really want to have to overcome, yeah. you know, relying on the Sarlene and flipping heads and even finding just, it at one of as well. More and more flips, and it's yeah. just... Uh, are you going to be one of those gamers today where you're just hitting <laughs> all those heads to kind of win your matchups? But at the same time, it's it's such a powerful concept. Just being, you have to flip with catches, for example. If you miss it, it's fine. It's a playable card. But if you hit it, sometimes that can just win you the game there and then. Um, and we've seen catches come in and out of play. It's been yeah. errated. Um, yeah. It's an amazing so card. <laughs> um, but yeah, these flip cards have such inherent power. Chromatic, um, being able to discard things like the battle VIP passes after turn one. But, you know, Brent has finally got his full board out. He's got three Mews and three Genesex this time. Wow. And there goes what the first that? piece uh, from Sander's side as well. We get to see the right hand of Mewtwo, it looks like. Or <laughs> well, the left hand, I'm not 100% sure, actually. Yeah, a bit up, oh, no, it is the up, right hand. I back the right correct. hand. I back the right hand. Yeah, you um, are correct. Which is a quick ball. He's probably going to be start to try to find um, other curly pieces, other Snorlax, because, you know, this Snorlax is likely to go down. Yeah. Um, so just, again, managing his resources, knowing, finding out what's prized. We're just going to have a quick look here with you. That Flannery, which was key in game one, uh, to be able to remove those Susan Strike, um, energies yeah. uh, will only be accessed via Peonia, uh, but the rest seems okay uh, yeah. at the moment. I thought that uh, Flannery was a two-off, but you're right, it's only a one-off. No, we one saw off. that Flannery, that one-off, get used an awful lot in it that was, last game. It was used three times, and as soon as Sander also saw the Silene go as well, and again, in this li in mm. Brent's list, typically there's nothing like power pads, they kind of reuse it. You only really need that one extra Silene. Um, once that's gone, those Fusion Strike energies weren't coming back. No, exactly. And I wonder now, um, on the tail end of game one, if Brent will maybe target the Sarlene differently instead of a switch card. Maybe he will be trying to get those fusion energies back because that 20 damage minus is going to be so huge when having to hit into those mm. big upwards of 300 damage, especially when you consider the V-guard energy as well. And there's the quick ball target of the routes there. Not something we expected to the see at all. One, Silene. The Silene, maybe looking for that quick ball again would be fantastic. It's double it's tails, double tails. Like, which is a bit of a shame. Um, not ideal, but there's... Okay, he's got the other pieces in hand. More routes, more Snorlax. Wow, who needs a VIP battle pass, eh? Yeah, and there you go. A <laughs> nice... Is that an empty hand, seven? Ooh, I don't... I didn't think so, but it could be. I it looks it like was, it did yeah. look like a fresh seven there by Sander. That quick ball would have been allow him maybe to get another routes in play because we saw how vital it was to kind of yeah. get free, drawing six cards per turn. It like incredible. That is incredible. Imagine if there was a supporter just said draw six cards. That'd be best supporter in the game. <laughs> supporter. Imagine being able to then also play a supporter <laughs> yeah. after that. Uh, so incredible scenes here from Sander. But as we see back over to Brent, that evolve into two Mu V Maxes in the active spot and one on the bench there. Um, Genesect, first fusion strike system, looks like a fresh six himself. Um, a number of pieces there. does have the extra Fusion Strike energy, which will be an easy attachment. Um, and will start swinging away because now he can use Max Miracle, even without even using yeah. um, the first attack there from the Mew Max. Could just use it on itself because of that Fusion Strike energy. Yeah, Max Miracle, not an attack you use all the time, but a very good one. For two energy, 130 damage, and it goes through all effects. You mm. know, good against stuff like Mill Titan, it's good against stuff like uh, Duraladon as well, even. Yeah, and applying that pressure. Yeah, and it, it just means if you hit it into low HP Pokemon, you haven't got to play the musical chairs of having to <laughs> switch and retreat and all that yep. business by using. Um, Techno Blast, just want to do a little Max Miracle there. Yeah, it makes makes things a little bit easier, doesn't it? Especially when Sana's side of the board typically doesn't have anything higher HP-wise yeah. than the than the 130. Those Snorlax kind of being in perfect range uh, for a Max Miracle. But there's another quick ball, another piece, maybe the right leg this time. But uh, we will find out for you later, of course, when we maybe would like to see it come out. Um, if it even needs to. I mean, oh we yeah. saw Sander... You saw how effective that last strategy was. I don't yeah. even know if it's needed. Well, the issue is with that Flannery and the prizes, um, 
I mean, we saw it three times, and, and I guess with the Curliers and the the Gardevoir being able to draw cards, we that's why we were able to see it so frequently um, in this game one game plan. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he kind of progresses through here. There'll be an opportunity to try and find those Peonias because there's a two of in his deck, um, and try and use them as soon as possible. Maybe try and get that get that piece because it's so important. Uh, there's a track and shoot. Discarding the, the Gengar. Gengar. Okay, does he play an ordinary one? Uh, well, we I guess got Silene, heavy Silene actually. So potentially after game one, he's already identified. Probably not necessary. Doesn't need to necessarily use the Mewtwo P Union. It's all about timing Here the right cards. Silene again. Opts to go one at a time this time. One yeah, head. He got one. Okay. And he's going straight through. What do you just? I wonder what he takes it. Moves Gengar to the front. I thought my back a copy of Trekking Shoes, maybe, so we can draw a bit more cards. <laughs> yeah, but it looks about right. You got yeah. it right. You got it right. I think it's just kind of he still needs to kind of continue bursting through his deck. Yeah, that still is, needs to set up. He does have double power pad in his deck now, unlike last time where he had to uh, he prized both. He hasn't seen wow. any uh, no, curly. Yeah, I was about to say, um, which is quite interesting. But he does have the full four routes oh on board my now. Goodness. Um, and if I was staring across from that, I wouldn't have a clue what was going on. But <laughs> uh, and, and energy attachments to them as well. But that's a free retreat. There's a fan of waves. Caused a little bit of disruption. Um, I like that. Caused some problems there for Brent, um, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But is Brent holding another one? He's holding three energies. Um, <laughs> so that means Elise is not going to be an option now. No. At least for fusion energies. I guess, for, I guess there's one in deck, actually. Yeah, one in deck. I mean, because there's only one out on a board there's none in the discard uh you can still use a list of sparkle uh, because until there's actual full knowledge Public of all knowledge, four yeah, yeah, yeah. uh which is a, a very another cool mechanic there and straight in with another attack that's taking the second prize from brent just the attachment of the choice belt to the bench mew and then the fusion strike energy to the active and another max miracle through those snorlax currently um sanders just kind of He's, he's a little bit on the back foot, but this is what happens with control decks. You're just yeah. taking your time because you're single prizes. You're not giving too much uh, too much away at this point. There's a the Trekker Shoes discarding the first option and taking the second card. It's a level ball. He oh, finally there has we go. access to his first um, Curlier, um, but he's just going to have a quick look. Maybe he can look for a different target um, if he maybe just... Uh, Trekking shoes to a curlier first. Yeah, it's going to say just maximize auto drawing into multiple. There's an ultra there's ball. There's ultra ball. So more discard options and more op more opportunities to. There's a curlier already coming down. Um, Here we go. Yeah, there's the first refinement of game two by Sander. He's just Ooh. oh, he doesn't know what to discard. Quick there's ball. the quick ball. Uh, just picking two cards there, we haven't quite seen. We just get a little ghastly in the net by the looks of it. Yeah, if it there's was. another curlier as well. Here we go. This where things start to get a little yeah. bit. Uh, crazy now i mean we if all four of those curlers evolve that's plus eight yeah that we, is we, we talk about how you can uh almost daisy chain those shady dealings yeah um, and it's been a while we get to see oh, another a, mewtwo piece and <laughs> another full flow of four um stage ones as support pokemon in this way where you're just drawing more cards or in the in the Nintelions and uh, drizzle lines where you're shady dealings and tutoring for certain cards uh, it's fantastic to see because we, we do have other cards that have a very similar ability that make do from the Chinchino. Yes. Um, it's but a Lipard with trade as well. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a very common theme for us to continue uh, being able to just draw cards in the Pokemon game. And, and we're seeing it in full effect right now. There's a power pad for double Silene. Um, some of those early uses. Of course, with some of the supporters that Sanders playing, he actually doesn't play many at all. So maybe that's why he was trying to utilize those Silene. Mm. He knows where they are and double power pads in deck. It's absolutely fine for him to um, just kind of use it early, maybe get more of those draw cards like the trekking shoes or more quick balls for him uh, for him to kind of get those pieces out. Um, there's the third curlier come down, Ooh. another Mewtwo piece go. Ooh. That looks like the left leg. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm backing it. I'm, I've got this sorted. I I I oh, there's a, a fourth piece there. Fourth <laughs> piece. The fourth piece is in hand. We so might see the V Union. There's a lots of opportunities. This turn. Here. May, I don't know, actually. Mm. He could take his time with it. Which yeah, he doesn't need to. I guess Sander isn't to know that all the energy is in Brent's hand, so you can't see an explosion with at least a sparkle to go up to four. Here fusion comes energy. the fourth curlier. Oh, um, my goodness. Look at this. Just being able to discard eight one every cards. time and draw two. He's drawing in seeing eight more cards. That deck is going to be 
short in, in, in <laughs> that quick deck's time. gonna be thin for sure yeah. but that's what the control decks like to do that like we see in standard likes to operate with a low deck size you can really manipulate what card you're drawing because like Sile. you know exactly yeah. what's coming next that's that's that way um of course we haven't seen the guardy yet but you know just being able to just pick two cards about discarding at some stage is fantastic as well because then again you're managing your resources yeah. and not having to constantly loop certain cards back into the deck um, there's the ghastly, there's just the kind ghastly. of threatening it as well. That extra 20 damage, we saw it. We saw it used in the yeah, last we did, game. We did, um, which is fantastic. That little fade out, yeah. yeah, fade out back into your hand, which is pretty cool to see. And there's the Gorman dies um, to replenish his hand back up to seven. So Brent still staring down at a number of Snorlax. He's going to have to get through his third one now. Um, but again, he just attaches the DT and then does so because he has all those NGs in hand. It doesn't really yeah. matter, or it matters less. I guess Nintendo's going to run out of sort of Pokemon to sort of offer up here. I, mean, I guess you've got the Ghastly. The other Snorlax is in the prizes. I'm guessing Nintendo's going to try and find a Peonia. I'm imagining there that if we didn't see the Mewtwo, maybe that's not part of his immediate game plan. Just want to try and, you know, um, offer up prizes, try and find the Flannery. But the thing is, the Flannery can only be found via Peonia. I don't think we've actually seen that in his hand yet. I no, imagine with yet. eight cards to draw, though, it might not take too long to find it. Yeah, there's a level ball. I think he's just kind of double-checking. He can thin out his deck. He's got things like that mana feeder, um, allowing him to kind of make sure he gets those key resources when he starts trading things away. Just getting him, get the less useful cards out of the deck and out of his hand in reality uh, because he's also hanging on to that V-Guard energy as well. Um, so a, a number of options, a number of directions. Uh, still plenty of time for Brent to actually take three prizes. Just an needs to announce three more attacks. Yeah. Doesn't have access to that boss so, or a gusting effect. Of course, the escape rope kind of helps in some way. Could remove a curly out of the way. There's a pitch of the Puku Muku <laughs> being able to attach. Well, not attach, sorry. Draw an extra <laughs> card. Just keep drawing. Uh, that's the name of the game from Sander at the moment. When you're looking at that board, it doesn't seem very scary at all. But when Xander's looking at his hand... Are we about to see the... He's got the, the three pieces. Union? He's <laughs> put we it back behind oh, the level board. He's teasing uh, us. Come on, Xander. Don't <laughs> do know, that to We us. know there's one more in his hand. And he hasn't used any of the curlies yet. There's the energy going straight there. Um, and there's the there's oh, the there's Gardevoir. The Gardy. Uh, so now evolve, evolving the one that just used refinement. Now that same line of yeah. Gardevoir has and drawn there's four the cards. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is... He's, he's drawn the energy, so he can actually technically use uh, that ability to attach it. Oh, to yeah, he could. That's a good point. He's gone straight to the curlier, it looks like, at his current moment in time. Just to double check, it does have a little slap tag <laughs> uh, for 30 damage. Yeah, a little, little slap. Prob That's literally what it's called. Probably not what he's going to be doing, but he could scoop up that Gardevoir. Yes. He could then at, um, evolve it. it into the other one and then use Brainwave, where it's got a 60 damage attack plus 30 for each psychic energy attached to this Pokemon. So it does, ca does kind of ramp up a yeah. little bit. But of course, ideally, you would have wanted to use those um, energies for that Mewtwo V Union instead. So has discarded that Manaphy now. Um, has got a number of pieces. Got that Ser Radiant Serena in hand as well. And he's going to continue trading or refinement. Refining <laughs> the deck. Yeah, just keep going. And there's another two pieces. There's a Silene and a Fog Crystal. Just so many pieces, so many options available to Santa because he's not his hands just never being disrupted. Um, he really just has opportunity to use whatever he likes at this stage. Yeah, just eyeing up that Silene. Almost um, have your whole your whole deck in your hand, as it were. Like here yeah. we see the Silene. Here we go. There's one. There's one, one heads. Head. And there's two, two. heads. Okay. He's double heading. So let's see what he chooses to go for here. Then. Just getting the Goes Gengar. The Gengar. That opportunity and again. Power pad, yeah. yeah. The power pad is normally yeah. the first target, uh, typically when you silene, especially when in a, in a list like Sanders right now, where you don't really have a loop possible. But he does have extra silenes in um, available to him because he was already putting both back. He also has another power pad available, so it's just identifying that now he wants to confuse the Mew, just kind of make him um, cause just cause a bit of confusion. I mean, it, they, the Mews have free retreat, yeah, um, and. In this version of control, Sanders is not playing anything like Galar Mine to make a, make a make a case where they get stuck in that position. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Sander, um plays out the rest of his turn. There's the final trade there. I really wonder what the game plan is with this Yellhorn then, because 
you can just retreat into the next one, but then I guess maybe he wants the one with the DTE to attack next turn for some reason. Mm. Not 100% sure as to what the reason is there, but I'm sure Sander, you know, Galaxy Brain yeah, over there, he knows exactly <laughs> what's going on. Maybe maybe we shouldn't doubt him. I think uh, he's oh. the one in this position at 811 with this list. He looks like he's oh. still eyeing up those. Wait oh. a minute. Maybe if he... I was going to say, no, if he goes for the Union gain, I guess if you want to get the V Union out this turn, it's harder for the, the one with the DTE to, do to do reach the damage. damage. Yeah, yeah, so that's why then, because you're going to force the one Here with the DTE. Here we go. There we got there eventually. The, and there the it is. All together. The Mewtwo V Union. Pew, 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 pew. Look at that. Look how all big that pieces. is. <laughs> Look at the size with of it. With the V Guard as well. Yeah, that's as vital to, again, kind of put it hopefully out of range. And then there's the Union gain attack that you see on all the Union Pokemon. That go. colorless attack to be able to attach for Mewtwo V Union, those psychic energies from the discard up to two, um, from the discard into uh, well, two itself. And now there's just a massive Mewtwo staring down at a Mew V, well, confused Mew V Max. <laughs> um, and as we go over to Brent, there's the Trek and Shoes. Oh. As Serena goes, um, this is it. I mean, Brent... If there's a way of somehow uh, KOing this, that's the three prizes he needs yeah, to is. win this game. But Sander already identifying that there's the power tablets. One power tablet's gone. We saw there was one prize, but of course, Brent's been able to take that now. It's now just coming down to how Brent is going to be able to play out this turn. Sander has gone all in with yeah. his V2V union right now. And it's interesting because there's no bench Bible for Meloetta. Meloetta's Echo is never an option. And I guess if he didn't have the fusion energies in hand, he could have burst up to four fusion energies, you know, started swinging with that Meloetta's Echo with a starting damage point of 280. But because there's no bench bar open, that's not an option. Meaning we're going to have to just see a ton of power tablets being played here. And the problem is that if you're not going to get a KO, Stan can just opt to do that super regeneration, healing 200. Like he's already at an effective, what, 330 HP, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um... 40. Which is 340, sorry. Uh, in, which a, is in effect, because yeah. it reduces the damage. But yeah. yeah, it doesn't increase HP, but it, it, that's the amount of damage that yeah. it needs to do. Which is a monstrous number, really. So, Yeah, it's it's a lot. And I guess this is why he's confused the Fusion Strike one, because it obviously has to retreat unless Brent goes for unless another flippy option, uh, which it seems very unlikely. Uh, there's a Lost Vacuum, um, just to kind of get rid of cards from that. There's a Switch card as well, so it will be a chance to retreat into Ooh. a... Genesect or Mew, and then switch cut back into it. So now it's not confused, and now it's doing a base 210, 240, 270. Uh, oh, there's a actually goodness. Needs, needs to draw. Sile, 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 this which could is be big. big. Oh, there's the oh, heads. There's one. That's not what Sander wants to see. There's one heads, and there's. Oh dear. <sighs> there's a, he's just kind of making sure there's the other tablet there as well. So he's just going to pull it to the top of the deck. Fusion Strike system to draw into it. It looks like a fresh six as well. There's not many cards in his hand. He's going to need all the pieces at this point. And there's only one Fusion Strike used. There's a Chromatics. There's a third. Ooh. There's one more that he needs. I think he needs one more, yeah. Um, and at this stage, Sanders just staring it down. Oh, wait. Is it enough? That's 90. What, uh, what 220. So it's 330 right now. It is one more. Yeah, it needs like. one more, yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah, the V Guard. Yeah, that is right. But the V Guard does just push it out of range. There's a Chromatic. It could all yeah. come down to this. I mean, he's still got. Like <laughs> three or two fusion oh, here we go. Oh, it's the heads. Oh, so it looks goodness. Like, looks like that should be enough there. Yeah. Um, so 120 plus the choice belts, 150 plus the 210. Uh, Techno Blast, that's 360 damage. Um, that wow. should be enough. So he, Brent has been able to close out game two.